good evening everyone and welcome back to the channel good evening good evening good evening did you miss me oh i missed you okay let's get down and talk about this reality show we're gonna be going over a reality tv show review you got it i'm picking back up on married to medicine i gave you installment episode four now i'm gonna give you episode five okay basically Excuse me. Basically, it was a setting of Toya giving herself a birthday party. And you know she has to have a theme. It was called Let's Paint and Sip. But her guests did not know that they basically were going to be painting nude men. And I'm not talking about how you be doing it in college or in a professional art class. And you just want to get the sculptures. No, these are walking glistening type of uh, models, okay? They are actually walking around, picking you up off the floor. Almost can consider it as a strip club scene, in a sense. But it was kind of classy, and not trashy. And Dr. Heavenly was getting her hands full and her eyes full. That's all I can say. The other little situation was with Contessa throwing away her dreams of adding on to her profession, when it came to uh, going to school out of town. And it seems like her world is falling apart because her husband is not standing on all twos and, you know, backing her up and having a united front when it's coming to taking care of the kids. Then we go to a situation where uh, Toya's husband is doing a damage control type of party where since she had her little paint and silk strip type tees, and I don't know why the ladies were going around posting it on their Instagram account. And they got some newsy husbands that picked up all the juice, okay? Because definitely Eugene had to have put it out there or tried to tell the men about it. And of course, Dr. Hebler's husband, had, like, he don't know nothing about it. And then when he found out about it, he told me, well, we're going to have to have us a girl's uh, thing. Well, we're going to have, I guess, some girls pop out of a, a stripper cape. Or they're going to be dancing for the men because he wants to get back at his wife, Dr. Helen. I'm like, honey, she don't have her orgasm <laughs> by herself. If you would have saw her being picked up by that man and when he finally put her down, she was just like, oh, I don't came in my pants. It was just so exciting. She was like, she was holding on to that moment. Like, whoo, this man don't freak me. He don't even know and these ladies don't know, but I'm going to keep it to myself type of scene. But let's get on into it. Let's try to break it down with each individual because we can't tear it too long. The last one I gave you was 43 minutes and I was tired of it myself. So let's try to get this down in 10 if we can. Because like I said, it wasn't much to it. It's just, you know, those were the basic points uh, of the situation that I felt. Okay, I can talk about that. It gave me a little something, something. So we're going to go on into, uh, let's go on into Toy since it was her birthday party. Of course, you know, she's doing her little thing. She done invited everybody or who she wanted to invite. Now, she invited people that got on her nerves. She don't have arguments and fights with, especially Mariah, because they tore it up at one of, I think Mariah, it was at Mariah's house. I could be wrong. It could have been at Toy's house. But they had gotten a little tip where they kind of got hands with each other. But like I said, when you're working for Bravo, True Entertainment, you can't take no litigation in court. <laughs> you just pretty much have to take them hit. It might pop off and just, you know, take it for the team. You might get a little extra bonus in now when you open up your check uh, next time when you get paid. All right. But anyway, um, Toy done invited. Her arch nemesis, people she don't had problems with in the past. And uh, she extended an olive branch to them. And they're pretty much on her team somewhat. Because, yeah, of course, she just didn't want to have her ladies there. She had to have some other people in the audience to say she has friends other than her cast members. Okay? Because uh, Tori's a little fire, uh, fireball around there. She's going to speak her mind, but she don't want nobody coming back to her face and, and trying to speak their mind and, and catch hands if, if possible, you know, but Toy ain't going to uh, back down on no fight either. If she get her ass kicked or, or butt kicked, she going to take that liquor and keep on ticking. Still get up talking mess. <laughs> That's why I said, you can't keep Toya down. You got to like her and love her at the same I mean, you got to hate her and love her at the same time. Uh, there's no straddling the fence with her. Um, Then she goes in and Shows us where she's going to have the event. 
And um, of course, she done invited everybody except for Buffy, which is going to be a problem because that's Dr. Moan's. Dr. Simone's friend, and you know, when she gets attached to somebody, she want to, you know, uh, bring them along as a third wheel, fourth wheel, or it doesn't matter her spare. She just want her to tag along because she's good entertainment, and she knows if she don't want to uh, fool with Toya or want to cuss her out, she knows she got her on deck where she can just talk to her and ignore Toya the whole night, okay? But uh, Toya goes over to the event hall to see how things are progressing. Because the lady should be arriving soon. And, you know, she just wanted to know what's going on. She checked the liquor. It's straight. She checked the food. She thought about it for a moment. She said, well, hell, some of them will eat. The rest of them I don't give a shit about. So she okayed the food. She okayed the decorations. And so she was just really looking for, okay, where the men at? Where the men? I, I, that's the piece of resistance. That's going to take everybody off the top. So, yes. I need to have, where is the men, and are they of age to be here, okay? But we painting them, and we painting them in the nude. And lo and behold, uh, Tori done got them naked but naked men out there. I mean, they swinging it, swinging it, shaking it, shaking it, posing, posing it, and everything. And I'm like, oh, is that against the law to show that on TV? Or is it, I don't know, because I, I was like, oh, okay, wait a minute now. Hmm, you know, try to get my feeling, but of course, you know, they blurred out everything, so you could only have the imagination, all right? But for them, it was up live and in color, where well, they could see in and everything, the crack of the ass, if you wanted to spread it for them, okay? Each of them models. Of course, they were like in their 20s, like 2021. 20, so, you know, that little money that they get probably is a lot they've seen in the whole month, so they're like, hey, it, be it beats. You know, working at Burger King or getting an Uber job or this, that, and the third. So, it was like, okay, all right, I'm with it. So, yeah, I show my behind. Just pay me accordingly. If I can get a little fill on on some of you old little fillers, then so be it. Because I can be the sugar daddy. Or no, well, it's not a sugar daddy. It could be the eye candy, I guess you could say. So, uh, basically, you know, all the women had come. Uh, Car Carly. Carly had came or somebody she had a little tip with or whatnot or I don't know what happened but anyway they became friends and she invited her so you know she invited everybody she had problems with as well as people she didn't have problems with but she didn't want to invite Buffy but that's what was okay because she was looking for a good friend Dr. Simone trying to figure out where she was and all that and she was like oh let me call her <laughs> And then when she called her, honey, she was on her way round the corner. She said, I'm bringing a guest. Buffy with me, girl. Buffy with me. And Tori looking like, man, why did you invite that helper? You know I didn't want her at my party. But, you know, I saw oh, some shit going to start. Some shit is going to start. Tori ain't going to let that go. She will not be outdone. Okay, and surely but surely, she finally get all the women there. Uh, Kari or Kari brings her a gift. Dr. Jackie brings her a gift. Um... Mariah brings her a nice bottle of champagne, but it was more so for her, not necessarily the rest of the team, because, you know, she probably could drink that whole bottle herself, her and Toy, or probably Mariah all by herself. She kind of remind me of Kim Zosiak in that red solo cup, and uh, her bringing her uh, choice of beverage like nobody else could find out or be up to the same standard she had for her uh, drinking ability. Okay, she needed her own bottle because she knew what she liked to drink. And she, she probably said, y'all too cheap, but I only drink the best. So let me just go and take that off your hands. I'll bring my own bottle, okay? So that's the tea she was giving me, Miss Mariah. So um, Dr. Simone finally got there with Buffy. Buffy was there all pleasant, all, you know, not really surprised, but, you know, she was definitely trying to, you know, fit in with the rest of the ladies. And she had pretty much forgot about the night before or, the, you know, if it was like a couple of nights before or what had happened between her and Jocelyn. But, you know, Toya carried her bone to the grave, honey. She ain't going to let no stone be left unturned. She's going to bring that shit up, especially if it was mud on her face. So, Toya goes on and, you know, have everybody sit down, get in their right positions. To get ready to paint, but she wanted to thank them for coming and being with her and sticking with her through all her little trials and tribulations, whatever. And uh, she goes in to say she was pregnant at one time, and her and her husband went to Arguilla or someplace vacation, and and somehow she had a miscarriage, and of course everybody got a little somber with her, and you know 
wanted to, you know, give their condolences and why she didn't call them, you know, all this kind of stuff. And she was okay with all of that. And I'm like, oh, what a Debbie Downer. You know, you could have kept that, you know, for another day. This is party time. You, you, you trying to take our spirit, our party spirit away from us because we got to be sad now and try to see if you still good, you good, you know. But, you know, that's how Toya get down. She missed good with the bad. The bad with the good, and, and she still want people to cater to her in a sense. So, with no further ado, she brought out the men, and they were just butt naked, and all the women went crazy. They couldn't believe that Toya had. She knew she was going to be having some subjects for them to paint, but she thought they were, well, all of them pretty much thought that they were going to be sitting in a chair. They're only going to show us a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, maybe a little cheek here, maybe a little side of a... Uh, penis hanging or whatever, but hun, uh-uh, they were in their birthday suits, and they was just, you know, she asked the single women to come up and grease down or oil down me with the baby oil, so they can be glistening and throwing glitter on them, and I, ah, just like they were inanimate objects or something, I'm like, Toya, you're treating them like, you know, they're not human, baby, they got feelings, but hun, they must was high or, or drunk or whatever, because they was getting all into it like they were in a, a strip club scene, of course, out of heaven, like, Oh, no, oh, no, like, she's so holy as I, like, she ain't seen nobody's penis but her husband for the last 15, 20 years, okay? But anyway, that was pretty much the whole dig on Toya, except for the travesty of a move. They were trying to move from the house they were renting over to the house that they were actually trying to buy, and I don't know where they get this little truck from, but it's a little bit of truck, and I'm like, why y'all didn't get one of them big old, uh, I think... They're more so for out of town type of moving, like them big old long transfer trucks that you just move all of your house in one swift move, and then you know it ain't all that going back and forth, back and forth. She, I mean, Tori and her husband, like they ain't got no money. You know what I'm saying? Like they common folks, and they've been on this reality show. I don't know how many years. Could y'all have not had a four movers? Cause you pack, you know, you pack up all your stuff, but then you let the movers move your stuff, okay? You don't help them move. Or hell, have people come and pack your shit. You know what I'm saying? When you flowing like that, you take the most priceless, valuable stuff yourself. But the other little stuff, you know, you could get them to move move your whole house, okay? And you ain't have somebody to clean stuff, and you ain't, ain't finna come back. And you need somebody to clean the, the new house you're going into from all that dust and sand and all that other stuff that's going on. Um. Uh, you get to put up with, with the new house. But like I said, you know, it just is what it is. Eugene gonna gonna let Toya drive him right back into a financial situation for the negative. And then, you know, it's just gonna be what it is because she ain't changed. Lord, this woman that still ain't changing and Eugene ain't changed either. Even though he tried to get her on point about uh, you worry too much about this, that, and the third. I'm like, Eugene, 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 you just won't learn. So then Eugene tries to have this little party. Uh, where he it's like a damage control party of the party that Toya had to explain but what you know happened at her party. And of course, the doctor, I mean Dr. Heavenly husband, ain't ain't he ain't for it. And that's pretty much all we had to say about Toya, that party and her husband trying to damage control. It was just a hot, outright mess, okay, of a situation. We're gonna move to Dr. Heavenly. Dr. Heavenly is doing her own thing. She always does her own thing. She goes over there to call herself seeing uh quad she comes in quad comes over quad lets her in they go upstairs uh quad's on the phone talking to her lawyer about getting rid of greg he goes and mentions to her about y'all need to file taxes and you know you might need to you know contact greg not greg you need to contact um yeah greg to see if he can she signed his baby said why well, i gotta call why you can't call you know just get my phone and of course, you got Miss, yes, Miss Heavenly in the background trying to ask who, what, when, where, and, and what are y'all talking about? And who going to get what and all this kind of stuff. And evidently, her attorney must be a Caucasian man of some sort because uh, Dr. Heavenly was making all these cracks about crackers and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, once uh, before I got off the phone, she was like, you really had to say crackers. <laughs> like making a mention to this man was white, you know. On the phone, and Dr. Heaven gonna act like she don't, she didn't know what she was saying. And I was like, Yeah, really, Dr. Heaven. So, um, that's pretty much what Dr. Heaven and, and, and Quad situation because it really wasn't worth talking about. Then we have the scene over there where we got, um, let me see, 
Well, we could bring Buffy in now because she didn't have too much to do with this either. She showed up at Toya's party and her and Toya got into it. And of course, you knew that was going to happen. And Buffy pretty much like, you know, I'm tired of this woman. I, You know, I down my own friend, my ride or die that I've been hanging with for four or five years, taking up for her stuff. And then she thinks she's going to uh, tour with my emotions. So pretty much couldn't tell her. And um, Dr. Simone took her outside, tried to uh, resolve the issue out there. But, you know, to no avail, Toya got what she wanted. She cussed her later out. She, she didn't want to cuss Simone out because that's who she should have started with from the beginning. Cussed her out for bringing her to her party because she wasn't invited. And Dr. Simone knows for a fact that um uh Tori don't like her. So see again, uh Dr. Simone being messy as usual. Okay, um let me see here. We got no we didn't really have too much to say about Mariah. Uh we go to quad yeah we did quad let me see and pretty much we're gonna touch on Dr. Simone for a minute. I think I covered it in my last uh, review uh, video. I kind of mixed them both together. But uh, they had a scene where uh, they had this uh, house that her and Cecil had gotten through some other money that had come into Cecil's hands or whatnot. And he called himself buying another piece of property, a home property. Uh, it was called the South Property. And it was convenient because... Um, the kids were closer to one of the houses. I don't know if it was the North House or the South House. And, you know, of course, uh, what's her name? Stott Simone didn't want to drive so far to see her family. And so they were staying mostly at the South House so they could see each other. And then when they went back to the North Houses on the weekend, just a whole big mess of a situation. But anyway, just to say this, to say that, the kids were helping them uh uh, what do you call it, clean up the house because they were going to be renting the house out in a sense to people coming in to Georgia uh, and they just wanted to stay in a home type environment while they were visiting Georgia and so they were renting out the South House uh, for, you know, I don't know a month, maybe two weeks, who knows but they were helping their mom and dad fix up the house or, you know, kind of spruce it up for the uh, clients that were going to be uh, actually living in their home for vacationing purposes and, you know, she was having a little spiel with them about practicing safe sex and uh, protecting yourself. And, you know, if a girl says, no, they don't want to have sex, don't try to force it or fight it, just get on out. You know what I'm saying? So that was it for Dr. Simone and her husband, Cecil. Go to Jackie. Jackie's trying to finish up her book. You know, she's done uh, concocted some kind of sex book, which I don't know if she's the wrong person to be uh writing it because she's not really sexual active. She's not, or she's not showing us on TV. She kind of looks like she's playing Jane, being bland, bland over there. She should have uh, hooked up with Candy Burris, you know. Candy could have introduced her to have her come to the dungeon tours and got her a good feel of what exotic, erotic type of sexual scenes you can partake with your lover or husband, however you want to get down and see it, a wife or whatnot, okay? But uh, she went and visited this lady. She took Dr. Helen with her, uh, and she was telling Dr. Helen about her book is all, almost finished, just for this last insert or piece that she wanted to put in there about sex toys and being familiar with them to spice up, spruce up your sex life. It's all natural. Um, you should be one with the body, and if you want to add you no know, sex toys with it, it should come natural with you and your mate and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, I hope you're doing these things with Curtis, okay? Because I'm not sure. All right, is he getting that lovey dovey, that freaky deaky type of sex or um, playtime with with uh, you, Dr. Uh, Jackie? But uh, they go and see some lady called the Liberator. That's her company of sex toys, and she have everything from A to Z. All right, and I'm like, Candy need to be over there taking notes or something, because hers is a little bit more far advanced than what Candy and Candy Cody Knights and and, and this Burris uh sex X rated sex toy thing she got on. She need to go visit her. Huh? Oh yeah, honey. But anyway, um. They went there and they were trying out little different pieces or whatnot or not trying it out, just visualizing it. And of course, Dr. Heaven called herself going to take a few pieces home and I guess try it out on her hubby to be. And it just is what it is. It was kind of a sorry type of review, but I gave y'all what I could give y'all because like I said, it wasn't that much to talk about. 
Uh, but that's my review on season seven, episode five. It was branded as naked and not afraid. Okay, and they basically was talking about um, Toya's little uh, stripper type party, but she didn't want to title it as that. She was just like, this the naked truth. <laughs> You speak your own truth of how you want to get down. You want to play with the men or you want to paint the men, okay? And you can uh, have a sip of wine while you do it. But that's all I had, y'all, for this video. Um, definitely like it and keep subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon about either a review or we're getting back to my commentary where I talk about celebrities and the entertainment world, okay? Please come and join me every time you see a video drop. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye.